In this problem, we're told a car traveling 53 kilometers per hour hits a bridge abutment. A passenger in the car moves forward a distance of 65 centimeters with respect to the road while being brought to rest by an inflated airbag. What magnitude of force, assumed constant, acts on the passenger passenger's upper torso, which has a mass of 41 kilograms? So let's draw what's going on. So we've got this guy in this car. So this is going to be the car. And so we know this car is going to hit this abutment. So let's just say it's going to hit this wall. And so when it hits this wall, it's going to be, or well, we know the car is going to be traveling 53 kilometers per hour. And the person inside is going to be moved 65 centimeters, right? By the airbag or whatever. So let's just say, I'm going to label it as delta X because it's, it's change in the X position is 65 centimeters. So change in X is 65 centimeters. And then we also know since it's coming to a stop, right? It's being brought to rest. The final velocity, so this right here is our initial velocity, right? Because this is what it's going at before it happens. And then after it, V, which is the final velocity, is going to be 0 meters per second, right? Because at this point, it's not moving anymore. So that's just going to represent what's going on here. Let's go ahead and write down the givens, though. So given, what are we given? So we know that the initial velocity, right, of the car is going to be 53 kilometers per hour because it's going to be traveling like that. So V sub 0, which just means the uh, initial velocity, is 53 kilometers per hour. And so what we also know is uh, the change in x, right? We wrote it, it's gonna be 65 centimeters because that's how far it moves during this time or the person. And then we know the final velocity v is gonna be zero meters per second. And you'll see why I'm choosing it to be in meters per second in a second. So yeah, because that's what it's ending, it's going to rest. Zero meters per second means it's not moving. And then we're also told uh, the person in the car has a mass of 41 kg. So mass, just m, equals 41 kilograms. So notice here what they're asking us for. They're asking for the magnitude of force. So how do we find force? So you find force by, or force equals mass times acceleration. So if you notice here, we're doing it of the person's torso, right? So the person's torso is 41 kg. We know that, right? They told us. So force equals 41 times the acceleration during this time. But we're not given that. That's what we have to solve for, given these variables. And then once we have these variables, or like once we have the acceleration, we just plug it in and we can solve for the force. So that's what our goal is with this problem. So we need to solve for acceleration, right? And so there's something we have to do before that, though. So when you find force equals mass times acceleration, your mass has to be in kilograms, which it is, but your acceleration has to be in meters per second squared. But notice how our initial velocity and our change in x are in like, they're not in the correct units. Right, so we have to change this to meters and this into meters per second. That's why I wrote this to be meters per second. And so because we want our acceleration to be meters per second squared, so we have to change these. So let's start with by changing this one right here. So 65 centimeters, what is that going to be in meters? So there's 100 centimeters for every meter. So essentially what we have to do is just divide this by 100. So 65 divided by 100, 0.65, and it's going to be 0.65 meters. So that's the delta x. Now we have to change this, 53 kilometers per hour. So let's change that next. So 53 kilometers per hour. So here we go. And what we want to do is get rid of the kilometers first. So we know that there's a thousand meters for every kilometer. And so you can write it like this and then you can just cancel the bottom. So essentially just multiply it by a thousand, that's going to give it in meters. But notice how we still have the hour, we need it in seconds. So there's going to be 3,600 seconds for every hour. And hopefully you're pretty good at this by now, uh, solving these. I was supposed to write that on top. So one hour, 3,600 seconds, right? And these will cancel. So we'll just be left with meters per second. So if you go ahead and do that, uh, you're going to get 14.7 something. I'm just going to round it to 14.72. So it's going to be 14.72 uh, meters per second, right? Because that's what the units were. So now we've got everything in the correct uh, units. So we just have to solve. So we're going to use kinematic equations. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you're pretty good at those by now. So the equation we're going to use is v squared equals v sub 0 squared plus 2a times delta x. Because notice how we're given every variable needed. So all we have to do is just start plugging in. So v is 0. So 0 squared is 0 equals v sub 0 squared. So 14.72 squared plus 2 times a, and so a is the variable we're solving for, so we just leave it as a, times delta x, which is 
So if we go ahead and solve, I'm going to move this to the other side right here. So minus 14.72 squared is equal to 2 times 0.65, which is uh, 1.3, and then the A, right? So, and then if we want to solve for A, divide both sides by 1.3. So A is going to be equal to negative uh, 14.72 squared over 1.3. So notice how a is negative, right? Because we're decelerating. So that's going to be this. So a equals uh, is going to be equal to whatever this is. And if you plug that in, you should get negative one point negative one hundred sixty six point six seven five meters per second. And so now what we want to do is solve for the force. So we have the acceleration in meters per second squared. We have the mass in kilograms, so what we can do is we know force equals mass times acceleration, just multiplying by each other, and we'll get the force. So force is equal to 41 times this minus 166.675. So if you go ahead and do that, you're going to get 6,833.675, right? And so it's going to be negative. And so this is going to be in newtons. So this would be a more exact answer. I'm going to round it a bit though. So I'm going to round it just to 6,800. So minus 6,800 newtons. And so they're asking for the magnitude, so it has to be positive. So because it doesn't include direction. So 6,800 newtons. If you want to write this as kilonewtons, right? You can just divide this by 1,000. So you can write it as 6.8 times, or just 6.8 kilonewtons. So this right here, you can use any of these answers or whatever your teacher wants to do. But this right here is going to be your answer, and hopefully you found this useful.